1965 Maserati Mistral Coupe, one of about 850 or so that were made. So this car replaced the Maserati 3500 GT, which was a 2 plus 2 grand touring car that they made in the 50s. Uh, this car was made from 65 until 1970. It was introduced in 1964 at the Touran Auto Show. And in its day, it was considered one of the best performing, you know, cars that you could get. The first year of production, 64, basically, it had a, a 3.5 liter, and then it quickly went over to a 3.7 liter, and then by 19, I want to say 66 or so, it was a four liter. And this engine was actually an evolution of an engine that was in the Maserati 250F a Grand Prix car. Maserati won like eight Grand Prix races in the 50s uh, with a, you know, a version of this engine. Juan Manuel Fangio most famously won the 1957 uh, Grand Prix World Championship uh, behind the wheel of a 250F. So it's pretty amazing when you think about the, the racing heritage uh, the fact that this engine was used in, you know, Maserati's Grand Prix cars from the 50s, it's really incredible. This was sort of like the last of a, an era for Maserati uh, road cars, because after... The next cars that came after the Mistral were like the Maserati Ghibli, uh, Campson, cars like that. They had a quad cam V8 to get more power out of the cars, basically, and so this is the, you know, the Mistral is kind of the end of the line for the old school double overhead cam inline six engines. It was pretty cutting edge for its time. All of the Mistral engines during the whole production run, they all had Lucas fuel injection. This one has been converted over to Weber's and that actually is pretty common. Uh, you know, Lucas fuel injection, that's pretty exotic. It, that was not used on a lot of cars, and so I can imagine that nowadays keeping a uh, Lucas fuel injected car on the road could be, you know, kind of difficult because the parts are probably hard to find, and, and finding somebody who can tune that, that fuel injection system is probably not the easiest thing to do. So this car has around 245, 250 horsepower, uh, which is pretty good when you think about it in the context of uh, the era. 250 horsepower back in 1964 out of an inline six was a, uh, a pretty impressive figure. A four liter Maserati Mistral could do zero to 60 in just under seven seconds. It could go on to a top speed of 150 miles an hour. It's, a, it's got a nice smooth power delivery runs really good and at idle it kind of makes this grumbly noisy idle and then it smooths out once you get some rpms up it produces good power good mid-range you know it has that vintage kind of slow revving feel to it. And honestly, you know, you don't really need to take it up much above 4,500 RPM to make uh, decent progress. And so I think that peak power probably comes in around 5,000 RPM, I want to say. This isn't like a, you know, a high revving, uh, you know, Ferrari uh, V12 or something like that. It's more of a kind of a, a lazier character to it. But this double overhead cam engine, it's a really, really great engine in the spirit of old, you know, Austins and, and Jaguars.
The transmission is this really great ZF5 speed. So it's got a really solid transmission. It shifts really great. It has really good action. Uh, the suspension in the front is independent. Uh, the rear uses what is called uh, Maserati Salisbury rear solid axle. So it has a solid axle rear and it also had four wheel disc brakes all around, which again is, um, you know, pretty cutting edge for its time. And now it's just a incredible classic. This is like a classic car at its best. This is a good driver. It's not in totally perfect condition. It's got some patina, but it's the kind of car that gets driven a lot and it runs absolutely terrific. You know, it's kind of one of those cars that you just, you drive it with purpose and you don't really rush it and some caution. It's got quite a bit of body roll. The uh, damping is really good. It feels solid and well planted, but it also is not overly harsh. It's got, um, it's a really comfortable uh, Grand Touring car and um, it's, it's comfortable, relatively quiet. Steering feel is, it's pretty heavy at, you know, parking lot speeds, which is what you would expect. Obviously it's not, it doesn't have power assist on the steering. Uh, once you get up to speed, it lightens up. It's not the most quick-witted car. You gotta, I gotta take it by the scruff of the neck and just drive it. Uh, this one also has alloy wheels. The early Mistral's had uh, Borani wires. The later ones, the four liter cars, they upgraded them to alloys. I think the alloys probably make it feel a little bit more nimble. And they look good on the car. They give it a more slightly more purposeful look. The pedal placement is a little bit awkward. The gas pedal is kind of down to the right towards the center of center tunnel and the brake pedal is kind of up and back and so you kind of have to you have to like lift your whole leg up to uh to hit the brakes so a little awkward but fine once you get used to it overall the car is it's easy to drive like the uh, throttle response is, is nice the clutch is pretty light that shift action is really nice out of the zf transmission it's really easy to shift. It's not bulky at all. Uh, it goes up and down through the gears, no problem. Reverse is easy to find. It's got a really nice mechanical, uh, well-oiled uh, feel to it. Uh, the interior, really comfortable. I love the steering wheel. It's metal and wood, and the horn buttons are made out of wood, and the rim is made out of wood. It's pretty big, but it's got a nice thin uh, spoke to it. Feels just absolutely perfect uh, in your hands. So the body was designed by Frua, and it's kind of widely considered the best looking car that Frua designed, and it is a really good looking car. There's amazing touches all over it. It's a very eye-catching, uh, striking car. It's a really, really nice design. It's got really great proportions. You know, there's a little bit of um, uh, Jensen Interceptor in it with the, you know, the, the, rear, the rear end and the hatch treatment, uh, maybe a little bit of Corvette, and you know, definitely it's got even some Citroen, I want to say. But it's a, it's a very beautiful car, incredible looking, and of course it's got the famous Maserati Trident on the nose, and that is such uh, an evocative badge and name. It's also a really practical car when you think about it because it has this really large hatch area, and you can put a ton of luggage back there, and you could go on a really long trip. This is a very, very practical uh, classic. It has a an incredible amount of character to it. Everything about it feels really special. All right, you guys, well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.